Yes.
Prabhupada, Swami Shila Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Isko founder Acharya Shila Prabhupada ki. Yeah. Jai Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parakar Acharya Stora Shashi Shimati Bhakti Siddhanta Swami Maharaj ki. Yeah. <coughs> Ananda Koti Vaishnavan ki. Yeah. Prem se kao Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityana. Shri Advaita Dasha Shri Gaura Bhakta Vrindh ki. Yeah. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopina Shankun Radha Gun Giri Govardhan ki. Yeah. Vrindha Vandhan ki. Yeah. Maya Pradhan ki. Jagannath Pushottam Dham Ki, Shri Shri Radha Desh Dham Ki, Transcendental Book Distribution Ki, Transcendental Prasadam Distribution Ki, Harinam Sankirtan Ki, Tulsi Maharani Ki, Bhakti Devi Ki, Samaved Bhakta Vrind Ki, All Glories to the Samud Devotees, All Glories to the Samud Devotees, All Glories to the Samud Devotees, All Glories, All Glories to Shri Shri Guru and Lord Shri.
Bhagavad Paramahamsa Parivad Nikacharya Stota Sada Shri Srima Hesi Bhakti Vedanta Goswami Shri Prabhupada Ki Ananta Koki Vaishnava Vrinda Ki Granta Raj Srima Bhagavatam Ki Nitai Guru Prima All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to Sri Guru and Sri Guru All glories to Sri Guru Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the very means of conquest, one should offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of Godhead Narayan. Unto Nada Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Saraswati, the goddess of learning, and unto Srila Vyasadev, the author. Nasta Prayeshu Bhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhakti Bhavati Nashtiki By regular attendance in classes on Bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving devotional service under the personality of Godhead, <coughs> whose praise with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact. So we're reading from Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 8, Chapter 21, which is entitled Bali Maharaj Arrested by the Lord. <coughs> and we're covering verses 33 and the last verse of the of the chapter 34. I'll just read verse 33. Vrita mano ratastasya dura svaga patacha da patishrutasya da nena yotenam vipralambate. Translation by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada. Far from being elevated to the heavenly planets or fulfilling one's desire, one who does not properly give a beggar what he has promised falls down to a hellish life. Vipralabdo dadamiti Vipralabdo dadamiti Vayaham chadyamanina Vayaham chadyamanina Tadvyalika palambungshva Tadvyalika palambungshva Nirayam katichit samaha Nirayam katichit samaha Vipralabdo Vipralabdo dadamiti Tadvyalika palam bhungshva Nirayam katichit samaha Vipralabdo dadamiti Tvayaham chajamanina Tadvyalika palam bhungshva Nirayam katichit samaha Vipralabdo dadamiti, 
Translation. Being falsely proud of your possessions, you promised to give me land, but you could not fulfill your promise. Therefore, because your promise was false, you must live for a few years in hellish life. Please repeat after me. Being falsely proud, Being falsely proud of, your of your possessions, you promised to give me land, but you could not fulfill your promise. Therefore, because your promise was false, you must live for a few years in hellish life. Purple. The false prestige of thinking, I am very rich, and I possess su such vast property, is another side of material life. Everything belongs to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and no one else possesses anything. This is the real fact. Bali Maharaj was undoubtedly the most exalted devotee, whereas previously he, he had maintained a misunderstanding due to false prestige. By the su supreme will of the Lord, he now had to go to the hellish planets. But, because he went there by the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he lived there more opulently than one, one could expect to live in the planets of heaven. A devotee always lives with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, engaging in his service, and therefore he is always transcendental to hellish or heavenly residences. <coughs> Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports of the 8th canto, 21st chapter of the Srimad Bhagavatam, entitled, Bali Maharaj Arrested by the Lord. Om Gyan Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshorum Militam Jena Tasma Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manovisham Stapitam Yena Bhutale Sv. 
Svayam Rupa Kadamaya Dadati Svapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Uta Padakamalam Sri Guru Vaishnavam Cha Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunatham Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitana Devam Sri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Sri Vishakam Vitam Cha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dinamando Dugapate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vrishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpa Drubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyavacha Patita Nam Adiyo Vaishnadeyo Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gita Shri Vasari Gorakta Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Vipalabdo Dadami Iti Tvayaham Chatyamanina Tad Vyalika Palam Bhongshva Nirayam Katichit Samaha Being falsely proud of your possessions, you promised to give me land, but you could not fulfill your promise. Therefore, because your promise was false, you must live for a few years in hellish life. Namo Omnishu Vodaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhagavad Shri Mati Vodaya Swami Niti Namo Namo Omnishu Vodaya Krishna Prasthaya So in this case, false pride is based on possessions. Being falsely proud of your possessions. So the Lord is saying that uh, he was that Bali Maharaj was uh, proud of his possessions, and of course, from a material point of view, he had every right to be. He ruled the whole universe. Um, at least Indra's uh, kingdom. So, the lesson for me in this is that uh, that when we have great opulence, uh, we are uh, we have achieved a good position in life. Then it's uh, very easy to become proud and. Because we think this is all mine, and it's for me to enjoy, for me to control. And I am the controller, I am the enjoyer of this. And of course this is illusion, because actually this is what uh, uh, Dave has uh, proved, that actually none of our possessions are, belong to us. They're not actually for our enjoyment. They're not for our, uh, under our control. Only temporary. Just like uh, often devotees will use this phrase or C stroke O. Care of. In the care of. So you see on possessions in the ashram or something like C stroke O and then initials of the devotee. So everything is just in, in the care of, uh, of us, of, the, of ordinary mortals. Um, and uh, nothing can we retain forever. It's bound to be lost in due course of time. So therefore, uh, this is false pride. Uh, real pride would be thinking, actually, yes, Krishna is the owner of everything. He's the enjoyer of everything. He's controlling everything, just as Prabhupada mentioned. Isha vasya midam sama, yad kinjit yagatam jagat. Um, everything animate or inanimate, so that basically includes everything, uh, is controlled and owned by the Lord. One should therefore accept only those things which are necessary for himself, uh, and not accept other things known well to whom they belong. Um, and of course they belong to the Supreme Lord, Lord Krishna. And everything that we have is just in our care. 
is just uh, for us to, the purpose is for us to, uh, to use everything that's in our care in Krishna's service and in that way become, uh, become free from false pride based on material possessions. So therefore, uh, simple uh, living, high thinking is, is the best. We try to, try to live with a minimum, with a minimum that, that's required, not accumulate too much opulence. Uh, just as uh, Queen Kunti said that, uh, uh, she said to Lord Krishna uh, after the battle of Kurukshetra, she, she said, um, as he was about to leave, <coughs> she said that, um, my Lord, your Lordship can be easily approached, but only by those who are um, materially exhausted. One who is uh, trying to improve himself uh, by uh, great parentage, uh, aristocratic pe parentage, great opulence, uh, high education, and uh, what's the last one? Uh, high education and beauty. Beauty, yes. Um, he uh, cannot approach it with sincere feeling. So all these things uh, we have to be careful of. Um, uh, high parentage, uh, I was thinking about that because generally we don't choose our parentage when we're just born. At least we don't directly choose, uh, but obviously we have in one sense cho chosen who we're born to um, by our actions, uh, by our karma. And uh, so, but still we're, trying to, we're still trying to improve our, our situation, our family situation so much attachment to family um, and uh, this is a difficulty that um, gets in also in the way of our developing pure love for Krishna. This is the goal that we're trying to achieve, develop pure love for Krishna, uh, serve him with everything that we possess, including our family, and thinking that even they are actually, they belong to uh, Krishna. Not that, oh I have such a great family, um, aristocratic uh, uh, or well-educated or whatever. Uh, so that's one of the, uh, the faults that we have to avoid because, it, because then we cannot, uh, we cannot develop that pure love for Krishna. And obviously high op opulence, uh, great opulence, that's what uh, Bali Maharaj had. He had uh, immense opulence and he was thinking that it was all at his beck and, come, um, and call, that uh, it was for him to use as he wished. Um, of course, one interesting point is that Bali Maharaj had actually acquired his, uh, his great kingdom and his opulence uh, through uh, some kind of piety, because he and his uh, and the demons they actually had great faith in their spiritual master, Shukracharya, and that's how they got their power originally. Um, so they were actually following uh, the right process. Uh, they were. Uh, that's what gave them the ability to achieve that position, and Bali Maharaj. So. Uh, he hadn't just relied on his own ability. So obviously there was, he was already an advanced soul. Uh, but of course, as was mentioned yesterday, um, Sukracharya ultimately became um, bewildered a little bit, by also by this great opulence. And although he was also a great uh, personality, uh, at some point he uh, also began to feel that uh, all these possessions were for his disposal. Uh, okay, they were under the control of Bali Maharaj, but he was controlling Bali because he was his spiritual master. Uh, but uh, Bali Maharaj, of course, uh, he didn't. Uh, he, took, he took to heart the instructions he'd received before 
that uh, the ultimate is to serve Krishna. And then he, excuse me, uh, so when, he, when Sukhachari started to say something different, at that point he, uh, he, he was uh, able to advance further and reject the, uh, the wrong instructions given by Sukhacharya. Um, another interesting point is here about unfulfilled uh, promises. So, Bali had made a, a rash promise that he actually couldn't fulfill. And I was thinking, actually, this is uh, something that maybe we often do. We say, oh yes, I'll do that, and then we never do it. Um, or, we have, we, we, or we make so many plans. You know, even just promises to ourselves, I'll do this, I'll do that, New Year's resolutions, things like that. Um, but then we can't fulfill them, somehow or other. So, and also in, in many situations, like in relationships, we may make promises that we never keep. Uh, like, until death us do da uh, until death us do part, is, uh, is uh, one used to be, anyway, probably not now. Um, uh, one of the vows made um, in the marriage ceremony. And but so often we're not keeping these. Uh, also in business, in marketing, you know, making so many promises that actually will never be fulfilled. Uh, just to just to get to acquire this opulence, to acquire profit. Um, there was one I was listening to one class by one young devotee, very uh, wonderful class actually, and uh, he started off by saying, uh, "Everybody wants." an iPad. <laughs> uh, everybody wants an iPad. And um, I said, yes, everybody wants profit, adoration, and distinction. So we're all after this. Um, of course, we're, uh, we're all after uh, iPads. Three iPads, yeah. <laughs> yeah um, but of course, uh, this has Veda base on it. Shamanandas also has Veda base. On it. Um, so it's Yukta Varyaka, <laughs> hopefully. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah. So profit, adoration, and distinction. That's that, that's uh, what we can. When we think of iPad, we can think of that. Of that. Um, and nobody wants HTC. Do you know what HTC is? HTC. Apparently, it's a cheap version. Uh, HTC, some Korean or something like that, Korean make of phone or tablets. Uh, so no, everybody wants iPad. Nobody because it's you know iPad is very smart and stylish and you know expensive and all that. Um, so uh, uh, but they uh, but they don't want HTC. What is HTC? Humility, tolerance, compassion. and compassion. Yes. <laughs> So this this is the antidote. The ICC So uh, yeah, we uh, of course, as was uh, one main one of the main points yesterday, is that uh, we can use if we can use something in Krishna's service. Uh, then we can use it, even if it's an iPad. Uh, and um, there was actually a, a story about there was one uh, in China, there was one young man who desperately wanted an iPad. And uh, it was, they're quite expensive, iPads, or at least that time, this was the original iPad. Um, and uh, he was, got so desperate and he had no money. But he, he was so desperate that he decided to sell one of his kidneys for uh, uh, to get just so he could get. He got two thousand dollars for a kidney, one kidney. I mean, that's a pretty cheap price for a kidney. I, I thought. But anyway, <laughs> this is what um, <laughs> material desire does for you, make you do crazy things. 
Um, so he sold his kidney, got two thousand pounds, and, and bought the iPad of his dreams. And then the next week, what happened? The iPad two came out. <laughs> so what's he going to do? Sell his other ki kidney? Yeah. So. Um, but anyway, I was thinking more in terms of uh, uh, promises and the result of, of making a promise which you can't keep. Now, there are many examples in, um, in the scriptures of, uh, of great personalities making a promise, making a vow, uh, and doing anything, being prepared to even uh, give up their life uh, as a result of and making that promise, that vow. And um, this is connected with truthfulness, which is supposed to be the last leg of religion, left, no, Dharma left in, uh, in this age, at least to some extent. So, um, uh, why is it that uh, it's so important to keep a promise, to keep a, your vow, your determination? Um, well, one factor, uh, I was thinking, and I'm, not, I'm open to suggestions, but one factor is that actually if we don't keep our uh, promises, our vows, then it actually weakens our resolve for the future. We can't, um, you know, we, we, if we take it too lightly, we say something. Because just like we said, you know, um, that devotional service becomes an established and irrevocable fact. I like that word, irrevocable. Some people say irrevocable, but I like to say irrevocable for some reason. Um, uh, but that means, irrevocable means once, once, it can never be taken back. If you say something, it can never be taken back. It's being heard by somebody. And that's it, it's heard. You can't withdraw it. Of course, you can apologize, say, I didn't mean it, you know, it was just in the heat of the moment, in anger, or something like that. But still, it's had its effect. And therefore, uh, what you say, um, the words that come out of your one's mouth, has to be, um, they must come from the heart, n not just from, you know, the coverings of anger, greed, lust, and all that. Um, so we have to try to match, we must try to match our words and our acts together. Just like uh, Srila Prabhupada, uh, I've heard many times uh, devotees speaking, his disciples saying that there's no difference between Srila Prabhupada uh, in public and in private. He, 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 he wasn't saying one thing and then uh, uh, in the privacy of his own room, doing something else or saying something else. He was, he was perfectly matched up. His, his, his public speech, his words, and his, um, and his, his private behavior. Uh, so this is very important because this, obviously, is integrity. Uh, we, if we have integrity, it gives strength, it gives power. So, firstly, we have to be very careful not to give our word. Uh, of course, um, no, I'll leave that for now. Um, but, so, that's the first thing, that if we, if we break breaking promises even to ourselves, it's actually weakening our, our own strength to be able to keep our word in future. And determination is a very important aspect of Krishna consciousness, that we make, we make vows. I, I will do this, I will chant 16 rounds for the rest of my life. So every time we, we make a, a vow, even a small thing, uh, then, and we break it, we don't follow through on that, then we're actually weakening our determination. We have less determination for the future. So one way to deal with it is, we don't, you could say, we only we only make vows or, uh, or uh, make promises that we know we can keep. But, we, uh, but, but on the other hand, you have to extend yourself. So we have to actually go a little bit beyond, but not overstretch, not over endeavor. Uh, otherwise, um, 
Of course, Balimaraj didn't think he was owed. He thought that he owed everything. And of course, he was cheated. Because this verse, um, the Lord is, well, actually in the previous verse, he's, he's saying that um, you cheated uh, by not fulfilling your promise. Um, but uh, actually, Krishna, he was cheating Balimaraj out of his mercy, actually. Because Krishna is the greatest cheat, isn't he? Um, but he does it uh, always. He's not really a cheat because he's the owner and enjoyer of everything. But uh, sometimes we need to be cheated, don't we? Just like we we actually go, we say we say to people, you know, just chant and be happy. <laughs> you know, take this book; it'll make you happy. But <laughs> it may take a while. Mind it. In one sense, you could say it's it's maybe a little kind of cheating. But um, <clears throat> uh, but ultimately, it's true uh, that ultimately, if you do follow the process of Krishna consciousness properly, with full determination, um, according to the principles laid down by the Shastra, Guru, and <coughs> Sadhus, then actually you will become happy. But it, there may be the, there may be quite a lot of work to. Uh, Come to that point, yeah. <clears throat> so we have to, you have to. I mean, it's like a marketing thing, I suppose. You have to give somebody, yeah, give, give a donkey a carrot. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to work. He's not going to walk, is he? Um, so, also, there's a question of trust. If you uh, if you break your promises. Uh, then you lose your trust, not only in yourself, but other people lose trust in you. And that creates a hellish condition of life. Because if you're not trusted, if people don't trust you, then actually everything is based, trust is like faith, isn't it? If people have, don't have faith in you, don't trust you, then it's going to be, well, you're not going to get um, what you need. Um, you know, okay. If, some, uh, if you're not trusted, then people won't allow you to uh, to take a take an apartment, uh, buy a house, or um, anything that you need to do, get into uh, get into some educational establishment, whatever. Without trust, it's based on uh, life is based on trust, actually faith and trust. Um, you you trust the bus driver that he's not going to uh, crash. Uh, you trust the pilot that uh, he's no, like there was a pilot I saw recently who was uh, prosecuted for uh, drinking vodka in the cockpit. Like that. So um, you know that's that's a breach of trust. So therefore, he will not be able to uh, to to fly as a pilot again, um, at least commercially. Uh, a doctor, you trust in the doctor that he knows what he's doing. Just because he's got MD on his door, or he's got a certificate, um, you just trust in that. He could have actually put it up there himself, made it himself. And, but you have to have, you have trust. So actually life is based on trust. So if um, we have to fulfill as much as possible our promises, be truthful, be trusting. Otherwise life becomes untenable, it's difficult to sustain. Like that. Um, there's an interesting. I was thinking about some examples of um, vows being made, and one vow that was made was when Arjuna, uh, when his son Abhimanyu was killed, and uh, Ar Arjuna was devastated and uh, desperate to kill who he considered to be the perpetrator of this deed, or at least uh, one of the main perpetrators, Jayadratha. So I just thought I'd read actually the vow that, um, that Arjuna made according to uh, the Mahabharat as presented by Krishna Dharma Guru. Arjuna said, if I do not kill that wretch tomorrow, then, I, then may I never attain the regions meant for the righteous. 
Let me instead go to the hell reached by those who ravish their own mothers, or those who are malicious, ungrateful, or miserly. Let me reach the dark world inhabited by rapists, slayers of Brahmins, betrayers of trust, men who seduce others' wives, who are unkind to guests, and who deceive and cheat others. If I do not kill Jayadratha tomorrow, then such will be my end. And then he carries on actually, Now listen to one more vow I will make. I do not, if I do not slay Jayadratha by sunset tomorrow, I will enter blazing fire. Neither the celestials, asuras, mortals, winged creatures, rakshasas, rishis, nor any other moving or unmoving creature will prevent me from re achieving my aim. If Jayadratha enters the nether regions or somehow ascends to heaven, I will still find him and sever his head from his body. When this night passes away, Abhimanyu's enemy will see me as his death personified wherever he goes. Now, um, <laughs> that's quite extreme. Um, and what did Krishna say? He said, you have made a rash vow. Uh, but, um, but Krishna, he, this is the difference actually. If, if it's if Krishna's <coughs> on our side, then he always wants to fulfill the vows of his devotee. If that devotee is, sinc is sincerely trying to serve him uh, uh, with uh, love and devotion. And of course, Arjuna was a great uh, devotee of Krishna, so therefore Krishna helped uh, him to fulfill his vows. But on our own, on his own, it would have been absolutely impossible, totally impossible to fulfill. So that's the main lesson I'm getting from this, that, um, that uh, if we make a vow, a promise, we have to understand that actually I'm not the doer, I'm not, uh, it's not my determination, actually Krishna's giving that, Krishna's giving it. And also through the parampara, uh, through the spiritual master, um, just like we offer everything to uh, to Radha, uh, Radha and Krishna through uh, Guru and Naranga and through their um, great devotion then uh, whatever little we can do uh, will be uh, uh, will be offered and accepted by Krishna uh, so we need to, so we need to have Krishna on our side uh, and we need to make sure our intention, our motivation in actually taking a vow or a, um, uh, a making a promise that is actually for the service of Krishna, for the pure devotional service of Krishna. Of course, Yudhisthira Maharaj was also one who was known to keep his word. And that illustrates one of the points I've already made, which is that he was trusted by everybody, including the enemies. Uh, so, therefore, he was in a position when Krishna asked him to say, uh, that Ashwatthama is dead. But um, I heard two versions of this recently. One is that he said, Ashwatthama, and then under his breath, the elephant is dead. And the other, other version I heard was that he said that Ashwatthama is dead. Then Krishna blew his his uh, conch, and while his, the conch was sounding, he said, whether it is Ashvatthama, the son of Dronacharya, or the elephant, I do not know. <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> but the point is that he, uh, Krishna asked him to do that because he knew that he would be trusted, because he was such a man of his word. Uh, and therefore, Dronacharya would believe it. Um, that was at Krishna's insistence, and uh, so therefore uh, it was uh, bona fide. Um, so, of course, Krishna came to uh, Arjuna's rescue by using his mystic, his great mystic potency, mystic power. And Arjuna actually, it looked like he was going to fail um, in his keeping his vow, and he would have to, and he would have to 
enter the blazing fire, as he said here. But of course, Krishna uh, manifested his Sudarshan chakra, covered the sun with it, and then as the Kauravas were, were, were uh, triumphantly crying, um, uh, thinking that victory was theirs, because if Arjuna's gone, the opposition is finished. Uh, that was their feeling. And then Krishna told him, just take your bow and arrow, aim it in that direction, that's where Jagannath is. Don't worry, in a minute he'll become visible. And then he removed his, his, his Sudhasana Chakra and, and one of Arjuna's arrows cut off his head. And uh, he was saved from this, from breaking this vow. Um, but so just like um, Krishna said in the second chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, for a, a person of honor, uh, death is preferable to, um, to dishonor. Is that uh, yes. what the words exactly? Yeah. Um, better to die. So, uh, in terms of following Krishna consciousness, of course, we've got the example of um, Haridas Thakur who had vowed to chant 300,000 names uh, and then he was having difficulty and then Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, oh, you, you don't need to now. Um, but actually Haridas Thakur really preferred to leave his body than actually not. So he very shortly after left this world <coughs> on the lap of Lord Chaitanya. So, um, these are the main points I have to, to give. So if there's any other points, any other questions or not? Sorry? Oh yeah. 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 But Bhishma's vow, is Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate? No, that's, that is true with Mary. And of course, of that, he couldn't uh, fulfill his promise of his father mm -hmm. to become the king. Yeah. And that's uh, quite something. Yeah, it was amazing. Yeah. Therefore, he was called, that was why he was called Bhishma, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that's another good Sorry? Yeah, so there's another, uh, another promise to do it and uh, to help him right. because he was here uh, in so, mm -hmm. so then, because you spoke about it, you know, if you, we have to make sure that the promise is in relation to Krishna. So then, in this case, it was not in relation to Krishna, it was in relation to moral codes or something. It was so much in trouble. Yeah. And she gets her back to the to, to 
And the Jew said, Mother, mother, I won a wonderful prize today. The <laughs> Kunti goes, Whatever you have, you share with your brothers. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, Mother, it's, 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 it's a woman, it's my, 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 my future wife. The Kunti says, What I have said, I have said. <laughs> the destiny <laughs> slipped into my brother. <laughs> I mean, it was outrageous from every angle, a point of view, which is what I have said, I have said. <laughs> it was just like, no, even though it seemed like a casual thing, it wasn't a big promise, but he said it, it was, I mean, we can't comprehend that. <laughs> yeah. yeah right. What it meant when he spoke, it had, that was it. We're, we're so, nowadays we're so, and the devotees, I think we're extra, extra expert at rationalizing uh, adjustments and changes and saying something, oh well, so we have philosophy to support our, our adjustments. We, we're, we're very poor, I know myself, and I'm poor, and I'm well, I said that to, to, to adjust it later on, but it suits me better to adjust my words. <laughs> uh, Thank you. Anything else? Because actually, uh, we have to win Krishna's trust, don't we? That's what we're trying to do. Win his trust that we're actually not going to be a nuisance if we go back home and make the And until we actually win that, win him over, then uh, he's convinced, or his representatives are convinced, that we, um, we're not going to abuse uh, that trust. Then um, we can't go back home, can we? So, so we have to win Krishna's trust, we have to win him over um, by cultivating um, the right qualities and faithfulness, faithfulness to our word is one of those. Anything else? Yeah. No, he was not a blind follower, that's true, yes. Yeah, no, it's not. Now, what is emphasizing it so much, we are not like all of them, we have to take care of you, we are ready. Yeah, yeah. And he was using it ready. He was using it, yeah. From that moment, we have it. Yeah, we should not be blind followers, but also we should be fully surrendered. It seems like <laughs> sometimes the. Uh, yeah. Um, what's the word? Dichotomy. Anyway, thank you for a nice discussion there. Manjara Shrima Bhagavatam Ki Jai Shri Prabhupada Ki
Thank you. 